Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. I'm at Gentry HQ. Look, there's nobody here. But before we get into today's show, just a quick shout out to Steel Arts, who sent me this amazing gift. Absolutely astounding. I'm honored and flattered he should make something so beautiful. He's been a supporter, a good Gentry member since I had, I think, about 5,000 subscribers. He's from France. Uh, and he's just started his own channel, so I, I wish you the best of luck. Do subscribe to Steel Arts. I'll leave a link down below to his channel, obviously specializing in knives, uh, which is an essential of everyday, uh, a gentleman's everyday carry, I should say. So do go and check him out. Massive thank you to Steel Arts. So without further ado, I'm gonna go into the studio and let's start today's episode. Horology. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the urban gentry. Its continuing mission to explore strange new watches. To seek out cool vintage pieces with pure class. To boldly go where no watch channel has gone before. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. You join me here in a very miserable gray day, but I must say it is my favorite type of weather, as you guys know. You could take the boy out of London, but you can't take London out of the boy, <laughs> it seems. But anyway, um, so what are we discussing today? Well, I've uh, basically relapsed after trying not to buy any watches. I am trying to save for my next grail and I've completely failed. It, well, it's been a month since I bought a watch, which for me, it's not that bad. So basically what we're discussing today is uh, what defines a luxury watch. What makes a watch luxury and others not luxury? Uh, so we'll be addressing that and um, basically hearing me rabbiting on trying to justify why I've splurged on two watches. The first of which is my wristwatch check. Yes, the Laurier, which I just reviewed. Can you blame me? It's, it's vintage mid-century charm. I couldn't send it back. I, ha I have to keep it. I just have to keep it. I love it. Uh, I've fallen in love and that's what it's all about, right? This is one of the hottest uh, new micro brands of 2018. In my opinion, uh, this is an absolute capital of order. I kept the gilt dial version, gilt being the appropriate word, but um, no, this is, the, this is the other form of gilt, the gilt dial, right? The other watch I've bought is right here. We'll do the unboxing in just a second. Uh, basically, this came about because I was researching for the, um, the second part of the Patrick Bateman video. Bateman, sorry. I asked you guys for watches under $3,000. Not so obvious choices and alternatives to Patrick's Datejust, right? And I came across this. And I, I just couldn't let it go. Well, you know what? Let's cut to the unboxing, then we'll come back, we'll discuss this, because this, I think, actually perfectly embodies what a luxury watch should all be about. And also, not only that, it was a smidgen over $1,000, which proves my point that you don't have to spend heaven and earth to get something prestigious, unique, special, um, and beautifully made like this. So. Without further ado, let's change perspectives and then we'll come back, we'll talk about it, all right? <laughs> Guess who's back? It's dear old Leaky, the Kershaw Leak. It's been, uh, well, donkeys since I used it. Um, I have missed this. This used to be my favorite knife. It perhaps still is. Poor old Leaky, it's probably feeling a little bit neglected with the uh, Benchmade or Benchmark or whatever the hell it is. Uh, yeah, good old Leaky, anyway. Let's uh, make the first incision. For a moment I was uh, a little bit scared and I thought, oh my God, it's just in an envelope. But, because uh, this is rather, rather, <laughs> rather fragile. Do you remember that AP that arrived in a jiffy bag? Oh my God. Anyway, drum roll please. Oh. 
Yeah, it's yellow gold. It's yellow gold. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at that. My god, look at that dial. Oh, it's actually going. Oh, my god, look at those lugs. So this is solid um, 18 karat yellow gold. Rather unusual. I mean, I've never seen a dial like it. But the real magic, I mean, look at that dial. So this is a universal Geneve. It has a section that is kind of linen, almost. And then we have beautiful applied markers. It is gorgeous. It is rather worn, but not overly polished. We've still got a great shape on those deco style lugs. It's very art deco, um, extremely stylish. So not only does it look quite distinctive, the real magic is inside. If you can see there, it is a micro rotor. As you can tell, I, I, I was just taken by this very different look. I wanted something gold. I wanted something, you know, real gold. And I saw this. I fell in love with the look, but then when I heard it had the 215 Universal Geneva movement inside, or an absolute steal. And yeah, so let's pull out the crown and adjust the time. 6.30. It's 6.30 here. What, what time is it? Yep, 6.30. Back in, I'll give it... Oh, it's got a silky, silky wine to it. Yeah, let's pop this bad boy in the wrist. Fits me beautifully. I was, I was concerned that the lugs were going to be too, you know, stick out too much. And the winding of the, ro the, the, the micro rotor, it's so different. I've always wanted a, the famous Genta uh, a pole router, but um, they're very expensive. This is a, about a third of the price as a, as a gold um, pole router. Same movement, much more unique has a bit of pizzazz. The way it plays with the light and that applied logo, oh, absolute class. My God, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I can't get over how it winds. And of course, because it is the micro rotor, it enables a, a, a super thin profile, lots of natural patina. Look at the end of the, um, the hands uh, and that second hand, it's very different. It's stunning. It's stunning. My camera's having a hard time focusing because it's it's mesmerized. <laughs> wow, love that. Absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, let's take it back to the studio. So I, I think you could certainly see why I pulled the trigger. Okay, it's not gonna be to everybody's cup of tea, but the combination of factors, and also guys, I mean, I'm a, I'm a collector. I enjoy collecting. I love the thrill of the hunt. Um, you could say, well, what's the point of the channel if I don't, if I stop buying watches? Obviously, I will always review watches as well. But I'm a private collector. Uh, I don't buy and sell watches as a business. I think that hugely undermines the authenticity and, and, and um, kind of integrity of, of reviewing watches. So I buy watches for my own enjoyment, my own pleasure, and to learn and experience these these pieces. And I've never had a micro rotor watch before. I was kind of intrigued in, into them uh, with the visit to the, uh, if you remember the, the Roman Gautier, he had that beautiful micro rotor. I really love that piece. It's a little bit of a shame this doesn't have a display back, but obviously this being from the 60s, it was before the, the display back. So what makes a luxury watch? Well, this has four features that I think really uh, encapsulate or embody or are crucial to what makes a, lux a real luxury watch. Okay, so number one is uh, the refinement. And this can come in many ways. In the craftsmanship, for example, the dial, the linen part of the dial, that little cross hatch pattern is all done by hand. It's a precious metal. I'm not saying that a watch has to be precious metal to be luxury, but obviously it boosts its luxurious quality. Refinement, skill, a degree of craftsmanship has gone into the watch. So that's the number one for me. That is definitely a hallmark of what makes a luxury watch. The quality of manufacturing. Secondly, the brand, the brand's history and prestige. 
if you've seen my jewel with the because uh, I, I I own another Universal Geneve or Geneve however you want to pronounce it uh, I the caliber 42 I jeweled it against a fashion watch to really illustrate that point history prestige it's important it's not a necessity because there are new brands that don't have that that are making luxury watches but it certainly is a key component I think Universal Geneve they're famous for their chronographs they have an, a long illustrious history of innovation many 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 people in history uh, famously wore them and of course their iconic pole router which I was I was really considering and you guys know my grail is another Genta watch uh, the, 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 the Royal Oak. Genta I think designed the pole router when he was 23 it was his first uh, design incredible watch and I must admit I am rather tempted the only difference is the market for them is a bit dodgy there's there's a lot of kind of iffy ones and finding a good one and it's difficult it's difficult and also the price is creeping up three thousand four thousand they go for these days for a good one so they have the icons under their belt uh, chronographs pole router etc and actually that brings me nicely onto my third point the mechanical, well it actually doesn't have to be mechanical, but the engineering innovation. I think a luxury watch should contain or have something, uh, whether it just be through the brand name, but it, it should have something um, innovative technically. This, as it says on the dial, has the micro rotor inside, which Universal Geneve was a pioneer of. If you're not familiar with the micro rotor, it basically instead of having the rotor on the on, uh, mounted on top of the movement uh, to to in, uh, decrease its thickness. Um, they put the micro rotor inside. They they miniaturized it, and therefore they had to change the whole architecture and the whole structure of the movement. This makes the manufacturing of it more intense, more complicated, thus more expensive. But the result is like this watch here. This is this is eight millimeters thick. And Piaget, and, and, and I think Piaget made the thinnest. I'm not sure if they still hold the title with the, uh, the Alto Plano, but in the 60s, it was a race to make the, um, the thinnest watch. Universal Geneve was, was at the forefront of that. I think it was between them and uh, Buren. Patek Philippe joined the, uh, the race later on. They still make micro rotors to this day. These days, it's, it's very kind of high end. Uh, you find it in brands like Roger de Bouy, uh, Laurent Ferrier, Armin Strom, uh, and Roman Gauthier, like we just mentioned, etc. Oh, uh, I think Parmigiani does one as well. Because the thinner the movement, it was a sign of, of technical mastery. Um, so there, the challenge was on. That kind of died out with the introduction of, of courts uh, later on in the, in the 70s. Um, which really is sad, <laughs> but we've seen a revival uh, now with the Hort Horology brands. And not to mention that this particular calibre was also in uh, some of the, I think the first, uh, not the first, because I think the first pole routers might have had a bumper. Guys, do correct me if I'm wrong, but the, uh, the 215 micro rotor calibre that's in this watch was in uh, some of the pole routers as well. So yeah kind of makes it more desirable, cool as well. Okay, number four, the last point that, that uh, defines a luxury watch for me is exclusivity and rarity. This certainly is not a common watch. Uh, it's very distinctive lug design, that peculiar dial. It's, it, it's just unlike anything out there. I've seen one more of these on the market and actually it's an even higher end version. It was a, a chronometer certified, exactly the same, only COSC certified and thus a, a little bit even more refinement. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put it on. Perfect, look, look how skinny it is. Look how slender that is. Amazing. Amazing, I have since changed the strap and it has been about 48 hours since the unboxing and I can proudly say it's keeping fantastic time. This to me is the quintessential dress watch. Slender, slides under the cuff, perfect for dressing up. The flash of gold, it is a rose gold, but it's quite a yellow rose gold. Uh, but the way it attracts the light, it's just absolutely perfect. This just goes to show, guys, that there still are amazing bargains out there. 
Um, I will be doing a, a video on uh, buying and selling on, on, on vintage pieces and on Chrono 24, so stay tuned for that. You can get a, a, a true luxury watch that ticks all the boxes for just a smidgen over $1,000. And why is it so affordable? Well, it's the smaller size. This, this is a 33 millimeter piece. Now, yes, smaller sizes are coming back. They're becoming kind of in vogue again. And I think actually this will have really good investment potential as well. Not that I really care about value, but I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna enjoy it. And it's kind of nice to know that if I change my mind or I wanna buy that next piece, because you know, a collection purge certainly is, it's inevitable. Never can. I've way overspent and I'm and I need to I need to kind of reel it in and, and, and get back to saving for that Royal Oak. Which I have to say, maybe maybe I should go pole router. No 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 no. Royal Oak, Royal Oak. Right? And the fact that you're not gonna see this on anybody else's wrist, I, I think that also makes it a little bit more special. Can you hear that? Can you hear that guys? I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, it's, it's a totally different experience. So I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts. What, in your opinion, makes a watch a luxury watch? Uh, one could say almost that, that any watch <laughs> is a luxury, right? <laughs> Especially in <laughs> these days. Thoughts, opinions, comments, all the rest of it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.